Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode of Tech Tips. I'm Evan with Griffin, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Resistance 9 and 45. These are pistol specific fixed length silencers. They're my personal favorites because they are low cost, but they're also very high quality. So if you've seen our Re Revolution line, which is our modular series, this series drops the modularity for a more simple silencer, but it keeps all the great manufacturing quality that you've come to expect from Griffin, as well as the perpetual warranty, the lifetime warranty. So we're gonna get into this product. We're gonna go through specifications and overview, the features, the key features of the product, the accessories and the mounts. We're gonna do a bunch of mounting demos for you. We're also gonna talk about maintenance. And so we got a lot to cover, uh, so stay tuned. Okay, specifications and overview. So the Resistance 9, which is in front of me, is a 1.375 inch diameter uh, pistol suppressor. That diameter is pretty optimal because it allows you to use non-suppressor height sights. Um, you don't need to have a red dot on your pistol. Um, you can kind of shoot with both eyes open and still hit targets. Um, so this is kind of the ideal diameter for a pistol suppressor in our opinion. Um, there are some wider ones. If you go to the 1.5 inch, um, you're gonna definitely need suppressor tall height, uh, tall sights, and those may not even clear, and then you would also uh, potentially need a red dot sight on the pistol. So just something to keep in mind, diameter does matter. Um, I have the weight on the Res 9 at 8.5 ounces, so very lightweight silencer. These uh, suppressors have a 77.5 aluminum two body, so an aircraft grade aluminum uh, uh, heat treated or hardened uh, T6 anodized hard coat tube body so very durable tube body um, and then the baffles on them are our eco flow baffles so they're a low back pressure baffle um, they have interlocking features and those are 17.4 stainless steel and those are h900 heat treated so you're getting a really high quality uh, silencer that's going to give you a lifetime of service life um, there are some silencers out there for pistols that have full aluminum construction um, I would be aware of that because you can't really do a lot with those silencers and they would wear out a lot faster. Um, so our company, we've decided to go this route with more quality. Um, to touch on some other features for the product, it is fully disassemblable, uh, so it is user serviceable. You can take the end cap off, pull the guts out of it. Um, there's a wrench that's included to take the rear cap off. So you can clean all of the components of the silencer, uh, which is really critical for pistol silencers because they do accumulate copper shavings and lead deposits uh, from shooting pistol ammo. Pistol ammo is just a little bit more dirty than rifle ammo. It's not super clean uh, because the pistol bullets do have exposed lead bases. Um, so it's, it's pretty common for pistol silencers to get pretty gunky, whereas rifle silencers don't as much. So uh, maintenance is required. Uh, make sure you're knocking that out. We'll touch more on that later. The Resistance 45 version, same diameter, of course, uh, 1375, but then it's gonna be a longer length. Instead of the 6.75 inch length of the Res 9, which is a really nice tight package, I think, the 45 version is a seven and three quarters, so it's a 7.75 inch length, and it gains an ounce and a half by being that extra length. So it's 10 ounces instead of eight and a half. Um, one thing to touch before we get to the unboxing is that the resistance silencers do not include a piston. So they are not shootable out of the box. You're going to need to purchase the attachment of your liking. Um, so we have three different versions at Griffin Armament. Most companies only have one uh, from left to right. We have the direct thread standard old school piston. Um, we do still make these, although we don't really recommend them. Um, then we also have the cam lock, the three lug interface, the quick attach, and then we have the easy lock piston. So you're gonna need to get one of those pistons and decide on those. Uh, we'll put links to those videos below so you can check out those different mounting systems. Um, my personal favorite is the cam lock. It's the fastest. Some people like the easy lock, um, but pretty much by and large, no one that we show these other two systems to really are running the direct threads anymore. But if you're old school and that's what you want, then we still make those. Um, so that's pretty much the feature rundown uh, or, or in, ter in terms of the specs. Sound performance stuff is listed on our website, so definitely check that out. Go to griffinarmor.com. Uh, look in the global search bar for resistance and pull up those product pages. There's details on nine millimeter, you know, 30 cal 22, stuff like that. Um, and we are doing a sound testing video for these silencers in the future, so that we will also try to hyperlink below. So next we're gonna go into the unboxing on the Resistance 45. So I've got a Resistance 45 in front of me. Um, it's of course in attractive packaging as you would expect from Griffin. Uh, we're gonna crack that open. There's a little bit of a touch on the warranty, uh, the story of the company on the side there. 
Um, so it is, the product is very well protected in this box with um, its enclosed foam. There's a pretty cool little artwork poster in here, uh, throwback to a uh, Vogue style cover for a uh, French chick uh, doing some resistance modeling for you. For you. So that's kind of neat. Um, there's also a manual. There's also a quality assurance card. We do test fire all the silencers from Griffin Armament to make sure that you're not gonna have any problems with them. Um, so we're putting that little card in there just to show you that, hey, your silencer is gonna become a little bit dirty because we, we shoot a few proof rounds through it, um, but that is because we are making sure you guys have you know, a great time with the silencer. Then of course the silencer, that's the most important part. And if you lift up the bottom foam, there's gonna be a washer in there, a takedown washer for the front cap which is just a generic fender washer, a two inch fender washer. And then there's gonna be a custom uh, takedown tool, which is really important. Um, that features a three uh, prong car stock wrench geometry in the front, front of it, so that you can take down the booster, a three lug installation device if you wanna go quick detach three lug, a piston retainer geometry in the rear, the three lug re retainer geometry in the rear, and then beverage entry tool, which is of course required if you live in Wisconsin. So. Without further ado, um, well, let's get into the actual suppressor itself. So take this out of its wrapper. It's gonna come basically fully assembled minus the mounting piston uh, like we talked about. So you're not gonna have that part. That's gonna be something that you would purchase. Um, I will stand in a easy lock piston uh, just for the demonstration. So out of the box, you're going to want to take your wrench here Put the retainer geometry on there, break that loose by hand, or with the wrench, then take it out by hand. And out comes your Nielsen device or your spring decoupler. Okay, this is required to get your pistol to run in semi-automatic mode the way it was designed if you have a tilt barrel pistol, like a Glock, like a 1911, stuff like that. Um, if you're gonna be putting this silencer on a fixed barrel firearm, like a subgun nine millimeter or a hunting rifle, a bolt action rifle, or something like that, you would need to delete this spring uh, or, or the suppressor could become damaged. So the spring system is only for pistols, okay? Again, take your wrench, interface that with the retainer, take that out by hand, now you're going to expose the spring. So you have this three piece system here in front of you. Um, like I said, uh, you need the spring system for the pistols, but not the rifles. So we're setting up for a pistol right now, um, which is going to include the use of a piston. I'm using the easy lock piston. So you take the spring, put it over the piston, drop that into the retainer. And then uh, I like to put the retainer on the back and because of that O-ring there, um, I like to take the fender washer, put it on top, and then push down to snap it over the top. And then start screwing this down by hand, and then finish it up with the wrench. You're gonna wanna be kinda careful with the wrench because you don't wanna scrap, scratch your aluminum part. So just kinda be careful with that as you get it in there. Okay. Now this is reassembled, it's ready to go into the pistol. So from here, we're just gonna thread it into the rear of the body. And using that three-prong car stock wrench geometry on our wrench, we're gonna interface the silencer there and just snug it up. Okay, and now we can put it on our gun. So this is easy lock. I'm gonna go through all the mounting stuff later with you guys. So it's ready to shoot, and as you can see, when I pull these apart, that actually uh, springs, and it kind of, and that's that's what we're talking about with that spring is that when you shoot it, the silencer actually springs forward and allows the pistol to unlock, which you need. Um, so that's set up, ready to go. I'm going to show you guys now how the baffles come out. So you would take the uh, washer, the fender washer, put it in the end cap here, and then just kind of break that loose. Then you should be able to take it out with your fingers pretty easily. Now there is going to be uh, some ST3 on your end cap there. That's to just kind of provide some resistance to loosening. We do that at the factory. Um, you can also buy that. I'll talk about that again in the maintenance area. So then I'll take this rear uh, booster piston housing out again. So this is uh, just again showing you how this suppressor explodes. We'll get into maintenance a little bit later. Then you're just going to push the baffle stack out and it, 
comes out pretty easily when it's relatively clean. Um, you know, if you need to do it, uh, again, in maintenance section, which we'll talk about later, you can use a, a wooden dowel or something like that and a hammer to tap it out. Uh, but these come out really easily. This is a 17 4 stainless steel stack. Um, the baffles are interlocked, like we talked about. Uh, there is one blast baffle, and that is the baffle at the, t at the top of the stack. Um, that does not feature the same geometry as all the other ones. So it doesn't, it doesn't have this little notch geometry in it on the top of it. So there it is, there's your baffle assembly. Super straightforward, uh, putting it back together, you know, obviously just take the pistol silencer, put that over the top, push the ba baffles in there to their limit. You'll hear it kind of click uh, to the limit of that. Then you can put your end cap on there. Snug that up. And throw whatever accessory you want to mount in there in the rear. And again, we're set up for the easy lock, so that's what I'm doing. So that's a quick uh, assembly, disassembly, initial configuration for your pistol, which is usually what people are buying these silencers for. Um, and to get you guys just kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of the 45 and the nine, you can see that the 45 is a little bit taller. Again, it's a little bit heavier, 10 ounces, versus the, the uh, eight and a half ounce, uh, 6.75 inch nine. So there you go. Next, we'll be getting into all the different accessories and mounts. Uh, there's quite a bit to cover, um, so stay tuned. All right, so accessories and mounts. Over the years, Griffin Armand has continued to produce more mounts, more accessories than any other silencer manufacturer. That's one of the things that we're probably most known for is our wide diversity of uh, accessory support. Um, and so the resistance, the pistol silencers are no different. You know, 15, 20 years ago, a pistol silencer was literally only just a pistol silencer. You couldn't really do anything else with it. Um, but today, almost every silencer has so much versatility in it, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, the resistance, something that's good to touch on with Griffin products in terms of pistol silencers, not only the resistance, but also the Revolution series, is that R77.5 T6 two bodies are very strong. A lot of people do them in 6061 or a thin walled titanium, which doesn't really support the burst strength that we aim for. So our pistol silencers do allow the users to use, you know, rifle calibers, which is not typical of, of your pistol silencers. So our pistol cans are a little bit almost of an in-between between a universal silencer and a, and a straight pistol can. Um, in terms of spec performance, uh, weight, you know, um, dimensions, they're a purpose-built pistol silencer, but in terms of durability and utility, they're kind of much more. Um, so here's all the accessories in front of me. I'm just going to kind of talk through these. We'll show you some slides of, of, the, of the various products. But we've got the adapters for cam lock and easy lock. You need those barrel adapters, of course, to use the cam lock and easy lock products. So I've got a grouping of those here. Um, also, three lug mounts. We're going to get into three lug mounts. Um, we've got a little MP5 here in the room we're going to show you today. But these are the three lug mounts. There is a three lug kit, which you can get for your booster piston housing, which uh, comprises three parts a shorter spring, a custom spring, a bushing, which is light, lightweight and pre precision made, and then also the rear part. Um, Griffin did a low profile integrated three lug kit. We were the first people to do that. Um, we still do the same kit. I think it's maybe had a couple slight engineering revisions over the years, but super low drag, you know, uh, product, really easy to use. Um, so it just pops on, pops off. That's great for your submachine guns and uh, PCCs that people are using nowadays, the nine millimeter AR style stuff um, and whatnot. So there's that mounting system. Uh, we also have fixed mounts. Fixed mounts are gonna be your direct mounts for taking that silencer from the pistol configuration, reconfiguring into the booster housing, taking this piston and spring out of there, putting the fixed mount in there, and then you can run it as a direct thread silencer, essentially fixed mounted on like a bolt action hunting rifle, um, maybe a PCC if you don't want to go the three lug route, um, or like a Breda 92FS pistol, which has a unique unlocking system. It doesn't need a booster piston, so you could run a fixed uh, barrel on this, or maybe a Heckler & Koch P7M8 if you're lucky enough to have one of those. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, fixed mounts are, are for fixed barrel firearms, so not your unlocking tilt barrel firearms like Glocks and 1911s and things like that. So we've got the fixed mounts we just covered. 
taper mounts. We've got two different taper mount interfaces actually for the silencer. Um, we have the taper mount minimalist blast shield, which was originally made for the Optimus um, years ago. That just screws right on there. It's got wrench flats on the rear, makes your silencer just a little bit longer, but allows you to use, I, th I believe, all of the uh, taper mount family muzzle devices. So even the long flash headers and stuff will fit in here because there's so much depth to the uh, blast baffle. Um, so that covers all the bases. If you want a taper mount interface that's more compact, but doesn't have quite as much versatility, we created a, uh, a taper mount interface that actually goes into the booster piston housing. So you can cinch those together with the three prong stock wrench geometry. Put that in there. And then you're gonna have a more compact version of the silencer taper mounted, but you're only gonna be able to run minimalist devices. So it limits your versatility and utility with the product, but it makes it taper mountable in case you wanna go, let's say uh, hunting, like deer hunting or something like that with your silencer. It's Maybe it's your first silencer or you just happen to like it a lot. And you're like, you know, I'm gonna go take my pistol silencer hunting. Um, you can do that with even 308, um, 762 by 39, 300 blackouts, supersonic, um, 68 SPC, those types of cartridges for hunting use only. Okay, so there's that taper mount interface, those two taper mount interfaces. Um, getting to the, we'll get to the caps in a minute. Um, Easy Lock. So Easy Lock is one of my favorite interfaces for our silencers. It's just that really micro, I kind of call it a, refer to it as a micro taper mount. Um, because it's so small. The, the muzzle devices, you know, the adapt, barrel adapters are, are kind of tiny. Um, so they just don't take up a lot of weight or space on the end of the barrel. Um, so really cool for your hunting rifles. We'll show you that when we do the mounting demos. Um, but I like this a lot for hunting personally, the Easy Lock, and we've got a direct mount, which is just super clean um, for the pistol silencers, your 1375. Uh, outside diameter pistol silencers, not to be confused with the thread pitch, okay? This is, I think, a 1125 or something like that thread pitch. Um, so that's not that's not the same thing as the hub mount that people are talking about. Um, so you got your easy lock there. We also do an easy lock insert, which is a reduced diameter insert for the booster piston housing. Um, again, you know, just a different way to do it. Um, if you wanna go, that route and you want to keep your booster piston housing you can just install this really easily straight away in the back of your booster piston housing that gives you that or if you want to go dedicated easy lock i kind of like the dedicated version myself personally um, but again we just have so many options then for cam lock we have a cam lock insert as well so if you want to do cam lock fixed mount you can do cam lock fixed mount again using the booster piston housing, screwing that directly in there. There's wrench flats on it so you can get it nice and tight. Um, so if you like cam lock, we have that interface. Um, A2, okay, you can, you can use these silencers, like I'm saying, on the rifle calibers for hunting use only, air quotes. Okay, so that's like a max of, you know, usually we say 10 rounds. Uh, before you allow the silencer to cool to room temperature. We don't want to overheat the aluminum tube. It's extremely strong when it's at low temperature, but we want to keep it at low temperature. So that's why the rifle ratings are for hunting use or sporting use only. You know, it's not, these are not dedicated rifle silencers. You're not going to run them like you would, you know, a welded full stainless steel silencer. Um, but we do have an A2 mount uh, for the, uh, originally developed for the Optimus, but because these suppressors are so strong, it's, it's a, it's totally okay and kosher to use them on the pistol silencers. So that's that, and we'll show you kind of how that mounts up here in a minute. Um, but that'll get on your you know, M16s. Let's say you want to go deer hunting with an M16 or, or AR-15, whatever. Um, that's how you can do it. So just another option for you. And lastly, we just recently made um, a dual lock mounting interface for the pistol silencers. So we have that now. Uh, we, we only have support for the dual lock for pistol silencers in the, um, I mean, for, in terms of pistol calibers specifically in the minimalist flash hider. So if you're wanting to dual lock mount this silencer um, to like a nine millimeter PCC or a 45 ACP carbine, something like that, you're gonna need to go with the minimalist flash hider because that's the only 
uh, style that we're gonna be supporting in the pistol calibers. But if you wanna use dual lock with this and run it on 223, 30 cal, then obviously we have that whole array of uh, muzzle devices to support the dual lock. But this has the pistol, um, this has the pistol thread on it. Um, this does go into the, uh, I'm sorry, directly into the tube body itself. So just screw that right in there. There's spanner wrenches, uh, spanner notches on the device itself too. So you can uh, hook a spanner on this and tighten that down, or you can just kind of tighten it down by hand, uh, whatever. Uh, we'd recommend some torque though. And now you have a dual lock mountable uh, pistol silencer if you want to go that route. So uh, there's so much opportunity with the silencers, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, just depends on what what is your fancy you know i we go to events all the time i just got back from one um last week you know and talked to some people there and you know some people like the keep it super simple taper mount stuff some people like the more gwiz you know dual lock uh, mounting system that you know mechanical locking stuff gives people more of a sense of security um, some people are traditional guys they don't want their mounting devices to be so huge so they you know i, I tend to push them to easy lock because that's what i would use on a hunting rifle so there's just so much here it's kind of ridiculous um, but that's why I get on griffinarmor.com do some reading check out videos obviously like this and others um, to make determinations on how you want to set up your resistance silencers okay lastly for accessories different end caps all right there's a lot of conversations on end caps so the end cap that comes with your resistance silencers is obviously this fender washer compatible version okay in my opinion this is kind of all you need um, that's why we put it with the product however we do have uh, flash hider specific end caps so if you're a guy that does some night hunting maybe with your pistol silencer which i have done and i have used these end caps for that with night vision um, these actually do help on killing flash they also allow for a socket for a wipe so if you want to make uh if you're an so2 sot i guess a license holder and you want to make wipes you can do that put those in there um, this is a really easy end cap to get to get off as well because of the four prong so you can use the standard fender washer that comes with it or a little screwdriver or something like that to install these um, but that's an option we make those in both nine millimeter and 45. also some people want to put the optimus uh, stainless steel end cap uh, in the pistol silencers just because they like the stainless steel they, you know they think it's more robust um, which it technically is it's a, a higher quality material um, so you could use those if you want um, those are available accessories on our website we make uh, the revolution end caps in 45 9 and 22 we make the flash iron caps in 45 and 9 millimeter and we make the optimus end caps in 9 millimeter and 22. so you can use uh, the optimus end caps if you want to with its little uh, two-part locking ring system um, so there you have it for end caps next we're going to get into mounting demos so we're going to actually show you guys how this stuff kind of works all right, so mounting demos. Uh, first up is a standard direct thread piston, which we still do make. I kind of consider them a legacy uh, technology because they break loose when you're shooting a pistol and they are more likely, much more likely to cause baffle strikes. They also just take a while to attach, um, but there's still an option. So this is a little Glock 43 with a direct thread mounted piston. So that's number one. Okay, so next up is cam lock. This is my personal favorite. It has a three lug quick mount adapter on there. And then you use the cam lock piston, obviously inside the silencer, just like that. It's on um, super easy and fast to put on the firearm. There's also a lead taper on the front and a taper inside the piston, which allows for mounting security. Um, so you don't have to reach up and grab the, the pistol silencer every five rounds like you would a direct thread piston. You know, you can run this a couple magazines uh, without having to check the tightness all the time. Next up is going to be the Easy Lock piston interface. So this features a full circumferential thread. There's no three lug to the thread. So it's a little bit slower than the cam lock, but still pretty quick. You can still get it on in just a few seconds. Um, as you can see, it also has the taper on the front of the adapter. So just like the cam lock, it does allow for that, you know, mechanism that you know, reduces vibration, keeps the pistol silencer attached to the pistol while you're firing. So again, you can run this for multiple magazines without having to check the tightness of it like you would a traditional direct thread silencer. Um, so a lot of people like the Easy Lock 
I personally like it too. I just like it more for hunting rifles and pistols, but you can set up on pistols as well. So next up is the three lug. This is kind of a personal favorite of mine for sub guns, uh, sub gun caliber firearms. Uh, we've got this pretty neat uh, MP5 K PDW in front of me. It has the factory uh, HK three lug on it. And so our, th our three lug system is kind of designed around that. Um, now we do sell the Griffin Armament three lug adapters, but if you do have a, an HK style gun, uh, it's highly likely that our three lug will directly fit to it without any need for modification. So this one, uh, this kit, like I said, goes into the booster piston housing. Um, so you replace the spring with the shorter spring, put the bushing in there, put the stainless retainer on it like you see here. And then you simply just slide it over the top and pull it back, rotate it, it'll snap into position, then you know that it's locked. And to remove, you do the same thing. Grasp the silencer, pull back firmly, rotate it, and it will pop right off. So super easy system, really cool, um, very compact and perfect for sub guns. So next up is going to be the Easy Lock uh, Fix Mount. I've got a really cool little CZ 527 here in 762 by 39, one of my favorite little hunting guns. Um, and it features an Easy Lock uh, barrel adapter on the front end of it. So this is, like I said, a mini taper mount. It has the taper on the front. And so you can put the, the direct mounted fixed mount easy lock in the rear of the pistol silencer, uh, put it on there as such, screw it down. And once you feel that taper hit, it kind of squeezes up. Nice, locks on. And there you have a super cool, like nice little tight package. This is perfect truck gun for doing some hunting on the ranch. And uh, this is just kind of my favorite way to set up these pistol silencers for hunting with these kind of compact hunting rigs. So there you have it. So next up is gonna be dual lock. I have a Angstead Arms uh, PCC here, a little nine millimeter uh, AR gun that takes Glock magazines, really cool. Um, just a neat gun. And so we've got set it up with a little bit of Griffin kit on here. It also has the uh, half by 28 nine millimeter dual lock muzzle device on the front end, as you can see. So if you wanted to set up your resistance for this, you know, you just buy the dual lock uh, accessory mount, get that in there, you know, screw that in there, uh, unlock it. You, know, you can also check out our dual lock mounting tutorial video for more information on that. Unlock it, screw it on, and then snap this mounting system shut. Make sure that the uh, collar of the mount is flush with the rear of the muzzle device. Um, so it's flat and then you know that it is locked and so not going anywhere. Super stable and just a super cool platform uh, for a nine millimeter to have an active lock on your pistol cam. Super neat. So this is the A2 mounting system. I've got a full size M16A4 here. Uh, one of the FN homage guns. Um, so pretty neat. It has the standard birdcage flash header in the end. And I have installed the a2 system on the Res 9. So to do this, to mount this one up, you're going to fish this rear collar around the flash hider, the birdcage, and then put the silencer over the top of it and screw it down. And then once, once it's compressed fully and you can't really screw it anymore by hand, then you can follow it up with your three prong wrench um, and put that on the collar and then twist it even more, get it super locked up really tight. Um, and then it's not going anywhere. Now you have a cool sporting use only hunting rig or maybe shoot a couple of varmints, shoot the woodchuck that's eating your back porch, etc. So another cool mounting system. So if you want to taper mount the resistance nine or the resistance 45, you would take the uh, booster piston housing, screw that into the silencer. Uh, if you want to use the short taper mount minimalist flash hider, which is what I'm using. Then you'd take our compact pistol specific taper mount interface, throw that in the rear of that, and then take your armorer's wrench, put your three prong geometry on the rear of that, cinch that up, okay? And now I have a kind of traditional full size looking um, AK with a taper mount minimalist flash hider. And you can just screw that on there. And again, 
just you'll feel it kind of squeeze up when it hits that taper. And now you have a pretty compact suppressor on an AK. Again, this will be sporting use only, 10 rounds, then allow it to cool. So, you know, this isn't a dedicated uh, rifle silencer, but it does give you that versatility to experiment with it, play around with it, use it on a bunch of your different firearms if you want to, figure out what you like shooting suppressed, what you don't like maybe shooting suppressed, and then potentially buy other suppressors or um, just, you know, configure this one and use it. So, really nice compact uh, setup though. This rig, I like it a lot, so. And AKs actually do run, in our experience, AKs run pretty well out of the box without modifications necessary to the gas system. Um, so they're kind of a, a joy of a platform to shoot. They're quieter to the ear, in my opinion, than an AR-15. Um, so just a lot kind of more fun, in my opinion, to shoot suppressed than an AR-15. Um, but that is how I would set up an AK if I was gonna use the Res 9 or 45 on an AK. Lastly, the extended uh, Tabor Mount interface. So this would be the Tabor Mount Minimalist Blast Shield. Okay, um, this allows you to run any length Tabor mount uh, muzzle device that you would want on your pistol silencer. Um, so that just screws in like such. There's wrench flats on the back to cinch it down. Um, and that would just give you a little bit lower back pressure because it's a longer span. You're effectively making the blast chamber larger. Um, so lower back pressure with this one than the one I showed you previously. Um, I personally like the length of the other one a little bit better, but it's up to you obviously options. So there's that. We're going to go into maintenance now. So we're going to talk about maintenance on the silencer, you know, how frequently you should clean it, um, considerations, things that you should think about with maintenance. Okay, so we're going to talk about maintenance briefly. The resistance series does come apart fully for cleaning. So I've already exploded that for you. I've got the rear booster housing, the uh, silencer two body itself, which is empty. No surprises there. The 17-4 stainless steel baffle stack and the end cap. I've also got a one inch brush and a one and a quarter inch, I believe, brush. We sell these brushes on our website. Um, I also have ST3, which is a liquid thread lock, uh, a liquid gasket compound, essentially. Um, if you notice, we put it on the end caps from the factory. It gives you just a little bit added security for the end cap working its way out. Gives it that nice snug kind of gliding feeling as you're installing it. Um, which is nice. So ST3 is cool. If you want to use ST3, you basically apply a dab of it um, and then set it to the side, allow it to dry fully, um, which is I think only about an hour or two. Um, and then you can install it uh, into the thing. And it's essentially a, a, a make your own gasket style compound, but we like it for various thread uses. Um, the other uh, little white dish I have here is the uh, Loxies 2020 that we resell on our website. You can buy a large bottle of this through an industrial place or you can buy a small quantity of this through us. Um, but it's a 2300 Fahrenheit rated uh, anti-seize compound essentially. That's a little overkill for pistol silencers. They're not gonna get that hot really, um, but it's, the, it's what we use here and it works really well. Um, now this is something that you would wanna put on you know, bearing surfaces of muzzle devices. Uh, so the tapers on your micro, uh, uh, the tapers on your cam lock, the tapers on your easy lock. Um, the outside surface of the piston itself. You're going to want to put that on the outside surfaces of the piston. Um, you know, just make sure everything's kind of lubricated. The piston is really the, the part of the pistol silencer which is really most uh, needed to clean. And I just do that with a brass brush like I'm doing right here. This is a demo unit that we've been shooting. Um, and as you can see, copper uh, or carbon deposits kind of build up around the outside diameter. And what that does is it slows down the piston. It makes it more sluggish uh, and, and essentially less reliable. The reliability of the pistol degrades as the piston system gets dirty. So uh, I usually clean that almost every range trip. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes to kind of brush it down and lubricate it and uh, throw, the, throw the spring back on there and brush down the piston system. Um, use the one inch brush, okay? The one inch brush on the interior of your booster piston housing. Okay, you're gonna wanna just take a few laps, a penalty laps here, and uh, make sure that you get that clean. Uh, the threads, you know, clean, free of carbon, build up, stuff like that, that could potentially damage threads or just make it a, a bitch to reassemble. Um, once that's done, you can either use the uh, anti-seize product on that thread, or you can use a little spritz, spritz of oil or something like that to just lubricate that so that it goes back together. Same thing on the outside of the piston. After you uh, 
brush this and get all those deposits off, you're going to want to oil that up, the exterior of the piston. That's pretty important because you want the uh, retainer here with the O-ring to very freely spring uh, back and forth. So that's that's kind of the check. When you're done cleaning the, the booster piston housing, the check is to put it on a flat surface like this, put your fingers on top of the retainer and just spring it up and down and make sure that it rebounds like that. Um, if it's not rebounding and it's sluggish to, and it's sluggish to travel, then you're gonna wanna re-clean it, uh, maybe, maybe change the O-ring or address some sort of maintenance there. Um, we do this when we assemble these from the factory. Our assembly team is trained to make sure that these are rebounding nice and freely so that you guys have a reliable silencer. But as it gets dirty, you're going to need to do that with your own maintenance to make sure that works, okay? Once that's clean, you can reassemble this. And now you know um, that this is good to go. Again, you'd wanna brush any threads, OD threads, ID threads, to make sure that they're free of carbon. Spritz them up, oil them up, or use the Loctite, or Lox C's, sorry, not Loctite. That'd be, that'd be horrible. Um, yeah, don't use Loctite on this stuff. We actually used to have consumers using Loctite on some of these things and getting the silencers like locked up and then they couldn't reconfigure it and it was kind of a disaster. So do not use Loctite at all on your pistol silencers. Um, really, I don't think any of our silencers uh, you shouldn't be using Loctite on. Um, but once you have this system uh, cleaned, oiled, then you can go ahead and put it back together, okay? The baffles are kind of up next. Now that's uh, up for conjecture, however you like to clean those. Um, you can clean them with just a brass brush like this, you know, taking your time to just work your way around them. And as you can see, I just kind of shined up that side of the baffle and this side is a little bit dirtier. So you can you can use the, the elbow grease method. Um, some people like to put these baffles and just drop them into a tumbler um, with some pins in there, the, the tum or corn cob, the tumbler that you might use for reloading if you're a reloading guy. Or you can put them in a blasting cabinet and, and just give them a quick blast off. Um, or you can drop them in an ultrasonic cleaner uh, with some simple green or some, some non-corrosive uh, you know, soap to, uh, to clean them off. So there's a number of different ways you can clean them. It's kind of however you want to do it. Um, but once they're clean, obviously then reassemble them, make sure that they're all locked together here. They all have these key features on them. Make sure that your blast baffle, which is the one that does not have the raised tab on here, uh, make sure it's on top. Once, you're, once that's correct, take your two body, um, which you have cleaned um, with the one and a quarter inch brush, okay? And you can clean this from both sides. Um, not only the threads on both sides, but also the interior body you wanna clean, all right? And once that's clean, uh, then slide this over the top, boop, okay, and reassemble it. Now what some people do, um, and I actually personally like doing this myself, is I like applying a, a anti-seize to the entire baffle assembly. I like kind of lubing it up on the exterior um, just because then I know that it'll slide out much easier. Um, so silencers are kind of dirty. That's just kind of something you have to get over. If you don't like getting your hands dirty, this isn't really for you. Um, you know, now you can wear gloves or whatever, but you're going to have to do some maintenance on these silencers if you want them to run. Probably the biggest customer service issue that we get from people with, sil with pistol silencers is that they talk about their uh, pistol not being reliable. And that's really the maintenance on the booster piston, okay? You can have a super dirty baffle assembly, never clean it, um, and the pistol will still run if your booster piston assembly is clean. But I recommend uh, keeping everything clean, why not? I mean, it's an expensive investment. Um, you're gonna have it for a long time, probably your whole life. So why not just keep it in top working order, right? So that's kind of the rundown on uh, maintenance. Um, I guess the last thing to say is definitely check the website, uh, check the most uh, recent uh, user manual on your product. Um, if there is a revision, um, we will publish them, but um, you know this product has gone through several revisions. Uh, the resistance series used to not carry quite the caliber uh, palette that it does now in terms of durability. So we have beefed this up over the years. Make sure you know which generation you're dealing with in terms of your caliber ratings. Uh, it should be posted in your manual that was shipped with the product. But if you're unsure, definitely reach out to our customer service, ask them questions, they're here to help you. Um, we do pick up the phone and we do care about our customers. So I hope that is a exhaustive rundown on the Resistance 9 and 45. Uh, if you notice, these videos are pretty long. They're kind of intended for people who are 
uh, legitimately looking for uh, deep knowledge in the product because they're interested in potentially purchasing it or they have purchased it and they want to know the ins and outs of the product. Um, so I hope it helped out. If you uh, liked it, please uh, share it with a friend or something like that. And, uh, you know, definitely check the website for all of the accessory stuff. You know, there's way, really way too much to list in the description of the video. So you're gonna have to do some self-education on the product in terms of the different things that you wanna pair with it. Uh, but know that this product is also backed by our perpetual lifetime warranty. So if you ever have any issues with it ever, um, we will service it for you and we'll get you back up and running. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, safe shooting, see you next time.